Hey guys, welcome back to Tampa Bay Diving. My name is Blake, and I want to thank each and every single one of you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed last week's video, DEMA 2023 Part 1, but today we've got Part 2 for you, and I hope you got some great gift ideas last week, but hold on, there's more. We talked to more vendors and more manufacturers to help put some gifts under the tree for the diver in your life. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to DEMA 2023. This is Blake here for Tampa Bay Diving. As you can see, we're in the middle of the show and we're with Kevin right here from Hammerhead uh, Spearfishing Equipment. What Kevin's gonna do is he's gonna give us an overview of what he's got new, what he wants to show off so we can get all your spearfishing needs met. Kevin, pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Blake. Pleasure, pleasure. to online. Yes, so well, what do you welcome. got for us here? Oh, welcome to the Hammerhead booth. And this year we're launching a couple exciting new things. First off I wanted to show you is our brand new wooden custom gun. So this is internally ballasted, has these different areas that you can add or remove weight. So your spear gun, this is a beautiful custom wood gun that we have available here. So it may, may be more for your blue water hunters, but we're really bringing it out for a professional spear fisherman. And we want to showcase it here at DEMA for all you guys here. So right there, it's got a enclosed track. Um, right and uh, super you know, ballasted. So this is one of your blue water spear guns going after some of your like phobias, amberjacks, even up to your uh, wild guns. So how big of an amberjack are we talking we could get with this one? It's a world record. <laughs> you can bring down your 120 pound amberjack. All right, I like that. A lot of fish dip to make. And what is the retail value for this? So right here, these blue waters are going for $1,200. Okay. And uh, wanted to bring it down to a really good gun. So this is our customs. So it's a two band right here, super efficient, very light. I can have you hold it. Oh wow, yeah, that yeah. is. And it's just uh, it's super easy to load, very maneuverable. And one thing I like to do whenever you have a spear gun is make sure my finger is as close to the shaft as possible. So a lot of these you can see right here, the material is taken away. So some of these small details really helps make the spear guns more efficient, easier to aim and easier to shoot. So the closer my finger is to the shaft, the more instinctive it is to point and shoot. That's why you have this material removed. A little bit of these channels and pockets are taken out. So it reduces the amount of buoyancy and flow in the spear gun. So you're not fighting it, trying to pull it down on your target. And is there any, when you fire, is there any big jerking from side to side after you fire with no, these? No, there's a pretty well ballasted with the wood. Okay. So it's got a, you know, a lot of mass, so to hold the recoil as well. Who is this one ideally suited for? So this is going to be for uh, most of your reef spear fishermen. Okay. So going in, maybe your um, for a red grouper all the way on up to your uh, cobias. So really nice length right here. This is a 50 inch spear gun. Okay. And it's a super versatile for just about a lot of the species we have, you know, either free diving or scuba here in Florida. Okay. You guys use this out in Hawaii? Yeah, in Hawaii it's one of our more popular sizes. So you're, this it translates to a hundred centimeter spear gun. So that's a really useful personal size. Fantastic. And what's the retail for this one? So these are $5.99. Oh, that's very reasonable. That's not bad at all. And uh, <laughs> and right here we have our Jurassic model. Uh -huh. And so this year we came out with enclosed muzzle and this variation is pretty unique. It allows you to free shaft. It, let, it, it traps a, mu a shaft in there from flying off. You don't have to wrap the shooting line like an open muzzle. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we made a second variation. We call it a Jurassic subspecies mm -hmm. with the slide wrap. So same spear gun rigged a couple different ways. Enclosed muzzle with the line shaft or enclosed muzzle with the slide ring. And what would you be targeting with these spear guns? So same thing. This is like your Florida, like um, reef spear fishing, grouper, uh, cobia, hogfish snappers. So maybe if I was going to be on scuba primarily, I would go with the slide ring. 
and maybe it's a little more advanced on scuba, I'll go with the uh, line shaft and maybe cut it away and go free shafting and possibly also for free diving just to set up. Okay, so let me ask you this, for a brand new spear fisherman, someone who's just getting into it, they're, they're already a diver, but they've never spear fished, but it's something they wanna do. Which would you recommend out of out of your selections? I mean, I think that's a great thing about hammerhead spear guns. We're spear fishermen. We're into spear fishing. We're into hunting all over the world. So we can custom rig a spear gun to each individual diver's like preferences, variations in rigging. Mm -hmm. And there's no two situations are the same. People have different strengths, different heights. Um, if you're scuba diving or free diving. There's a lot of different variations that we can dial in for each and every customer. Okay. So generally, I'd say it's a 90 centimeter spear gun. But if you're going to be able to open muzzle, close muzzle, or slide ring, um, you know, we can also build that variations in with the same brands, same spear gun, just depending on the professional rigging that we do. So what do we got here? So everybody says the hammerhead masks are so popular because they've got the GoPro mount. Yep. Yes, that is true. But it's also because their Hammerhead is the only brand to be 100% Apex lenses or ultra clear. Mm -hmm. um, and what is that is? So that's ultra clear glass that's 10% cleaner than standard temper. So what you're doing is if you buy a Hammerhead mask, you're buying yourself 10% cleaner water. In addition to that, we also have different lenses, different size masks. So the MV3, that uh, stands for mask volume three, huh. low volume, Super great for free diving. The MV4, a little bit larger volume. MV6, and now so we have our frameless variety. I was gonna say, these look really good for free divers. The volume is yeah, really low. Ultra low volume is, it also has a teardrop shape, so you can see your gauges. Fits a lot of faces, a large nose pocket. It's a very, very popular frame. And it likes it. So 100% of the hammerhead masks are ultra clear glass. So it really gives you the competitive edge for spear fishing, shell collecting, lobstering, mm -hmm. everybody can get 10% fire squared more. Now tell me about these. I know these snorkels are gaining popularity. Snorkels, we've got some real snorkels, super bright colors. Uh, they also have a smaller mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. So, and that's such a 100% silicone mouthpiece, so a little bit more flexible. So super easy for a lot of people to fit inside their mouth. So, uh, and our standard J snorkel, the bore is a little bit larger. So sometimes the mouthpiece will collapse. So super deep inhalations, you know, and that's one thing that we do have a lot of variations in snorkels with the mouthpiece sizes for you know, different divers. Yeah, I know personally with uh, scuba divers, these are even becoming more popular because most of the time after we get out of our open water course, we don't really wear a snorkel all that much unless we're teaching. So I know personally, I have one of these and I've already started clipping it just in case I need it. Put it away, it's, yeah. it's either clipped on the D-ring or it's in my pocket. You one of the two. your bikini? Could, yeah. I won't, I'll spare the audience on that one. Uh, but yeah, and it looks like you got some amazing fins here. So and these are also our fin packages or combo kits. You know, we have lots of fins. So the fin packages, you know, really nice premium bag that goes with it. So of course, the best selling camera is fins goes with a really, really nice mesh bag with the MV3 Ultra Clear Glass mask. So a great combo, great price. It's basically, you're getting the bag for free. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's always good for it to come in something where you can carry it, you know, just lugging it around. So right here, we have the Hammerhead Apex Glass. And right here, we have your standard temper. You see the difference? Yeah, a lot more clarity over here in the Hammerhead. It looks a lot better. But the difference is 10%. So yeah. not everybody can see the difference between 10% just looking here. But if we put them on a piece of white paper, that's the standard temper glass. You see that greenish tint? And we have the Apex glass. So you can see like a clear 10% difference in clarity. Yeah, now yeah. Now that we have it on that white background. And uh, I want to tell everybody, you buy the hammerhead mask, you're buying yourself 10% cleaner water. So, and it's not just 10% linearly, it's 10% pi R squared, how much more area you're covering for lobstering, for collecting, looking for fish. So it doesn't guarantee you're like catch them, but guarantees you'll see 10% pi R squared more. more. Yeah, but, and you know, anything to help like you. Lobstering, like yeah. if you see a lobster, you should be able to get them out of the hole. Yeah, anything to help you when, Sometimes vision is a, is a huge impairment when we're underwater yeah. and the better quality mask you have with a better quality lens so can make all the difference. So that is the Hammerhead Apex Challenge. 
taking a look at the 10% clarity increase between the hammerhead versus the standard temper. Okay. Well, thank you, Kevin, so much. I appreciate you showing me all your products. If our viewers out there want to find you, where can they reach you at? Uh, just go to your local dive shop and like go to your you know, free diving and spearfishing section. They should have it there. If not, you can go to um, you know, hammerheadspearguns.com, but your local dive shop to pretty much carry everything that you need from a hammerhead. All right. And I'll include all links down to all their products and everything so you can check it out in the description of the video as well to their website. Kevin, okay. thank you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, Hey guys, welcome back to DEMA 2023. I'm Blake here at Tampa Bay Diving and we're talking with Walt here from Scuba Pro, one of my favorite brands. Awesome. Walt, how's, uh, how's your DEMA been? It's been very good, very yeah. busy. Are you as hoarse as me yet? Almost, Yeah. almost. Day three, almost. Yeah, it's yeah. getting there. We've yeah. been talking so much. There's so much going on here, guys, and we're just excited to bring you uh, everything that's gonna be coming out. So Walt, I see obviously you got some fins here. What's going on? Got some great fins here. So uh, a few other things to show you here, Blake. This is our Sea Wing Supernova fin. Uh -huh. uh, the fin's been out now for about a year. We sell these in black and white. What's new for this year is the color blades. So we have all of our Hydrosport colors. They simply attach on to the uh, fin with a tool. That adds some color to your fin along with the colored uh, little hinge here. Okay. So um, if you want color, we have these available uh, coming up very soon. And we also have a new blade for the Supernova fins. Remember guys, this fin is a modular fin. It's purchased as an open heel fin for your buoys, but you can uh, also buy a boot, uh, a barefoot fin, open, a full foot fin. Mm -hmm. So basically you can remove this, do a full foot fin for your boat diving, or keep it open heel for your shore diving. So basically one pair of fins covers all types of diving. Okay. Really cool. Uh, if you want color, that can be added. Now, in addition to that, we currently now have available our tech blade. So the tech blade is for divers who want more of a jet fin style blade uh -huh. for alternative type kicks with your uh, scissor kick, frog kick, backing up type of kicks. So this is a very high performance blade and this blade actually comes attached with two metal plates. So metal plates in place makes this fin a negative fin, it feels kind of a heavy fin. So a negative buoyancy with the two plates. Oh wow. But yeah. The diver can simply remove one plate for a neutral fin or both plates for a slightly positive fin. Okay. So I think the ultimate way to buy this fin is to buy the fin, buy the foot pocket, buy this blade. Yeah. Maybe a great blade for your wreck diving, cave diving, uh, tech diving, teaching maybe for yeah. you know, you know, fin work in the pool. So this will push me and my twin uh, my twin LP85s? This will push you all that exactly. High performance, high performance fin, uh, gonna cover all those type of diving, but then for your basic flutter kick, we have the basic uh, standard blade that comes with it. Wow. This fin is outsold forecast by double. They're mm. super popular. And again, they've been available only in white or black. Okay. So as we know, divers want their colors and they have all the color range with the new blades. Yeah, I can tell you personally, I know a bunch of uh, of our ladies down in Tampa love the yeah. turquoise. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually can be very creative with this fin because the blades are available in colors. We also have, I think, nine colors of skegs. You could do different skeg colors for a really unique combination. So, okay. So that way my fins can be different from your fins. Yeah. Wow, they look great. I, yeah. you know, I'm excited. I'm probably going to get a pair and test them out. Yeah, you definitely. You know the Sea Wing Nova fin or the Go fin? Yeah. So those are both fins made the same monoprene material. Yeah. Those fins have a lifetime warranty against defects in materials and workmanship, uh -huh. and so they're going to last a long time. They're proven. The Novas have been out for 13 years. The go fins, they just don't break. So mm. these fins, actually the the, the uh, bungee on the back here is incredibly durable. So I think if you buy a pair of Supernova fins, it's the last fin you're gonna buy. Yeah, I, well, full disclosure, um, I've had a pair of jet fins for my Scuba Pro Jets. I don't know how long. I sold those for 60 years. Yeah, those things are just workhorses. Those yeah. are my, when I'm getting into a deep wreck and I'm pushing those LP85s and I've got some, you know, some, uh, you know, decompression gas, I've. Those things just work so well for yeah. that. And they I- They last forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't had to buy a new People pair. walk on these shelves and say, these jet fins are 50 years old. Yeah. What product can you buy in America that lasts that long? Yeah, I think- In, in this environment, diving. I think literally the only thing I had to replace was the strap. Fin strap. Yeah, that was yeah. it. You actually have the spring straps for those as well. Okay. So you can put a spring strap if you ever want. Yeah, I do, I do go for the spring straps now yeah. just because it's easier to it's last easier. longer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, these are great. Uh, we're definitely going to test some of these out. Um, what else does uh, Scuba Pro have that's here? Okay, so this is our 60th year, mm -hmm. uh, 60 year anniversary, founded in 1963. So there's two really cool anniversary items. 
They're both limited edition, so there's not a ton left. But I would recommend anyone who loves diving, who loves this brand to consider. We have a regulator that's uh, called the Mark 25 S620, limited edition. I saw it's got it. some really cool red accents on the second stage, a red spring in the first stage, some red accent. It's got a beautiful case and they're serialized. We only made 1,963 of these. The retail price is $2,200. I bought one. It's so gorgeous, I cannot even use it. I put it away. Yeah. I love it. I walked over there through it's, the booth earlier today and I saw it and yeah, I was just like... It's beautiful. My, my only question was, do you make it in DIN? They do make it in DIN. Okay, because I... They make it in DIN. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. I saw the yoke over there and yeah. I was just like... There's only a few left. Oh. So that's a limited edition, March 25, Essex 26th anniversary. We also make the limited edition uh, G3 dive computer. So this one only made 500. Now yeah. the G3 is our new computer for this year. It's a watch style, like a G2 watch style. People love the G2 because it's easy to read, easy to use, and rechargeable. Same thing, this is a watch style, easy to read, easy to use, rechargeable model, all those great features. But the anniversary model has a red dial. Mm -hmm. Why red? The company started off all parts of black and the first color we dipped our toe in with was red. Okay. So red you kind of wasn't great because it goes away in the water very quickly. Now we have pink and yellow, all these color ranges, but red was kind of the first color we tried. So the anniversary items have some red markings, so they're very unique, but they look gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so, so the red dial is on the anniversary model. Yeah. And this model is limited to 500 pieces. Okay. Again, there's only a few left. So we're showing it here, but I highly recommend if you like these items to go buy them right away. Yeah, uh, definitely. I can buy the G2 with the black dial. That's the current item we're selling this year with the red dial special. Mm, yeah, and when you say limited edition, it just makes me want to. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like, and they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, and then you'll see it in a museum eventually one day, and it's like, yeah, you can try surprise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I definitely saw it. So I, I had the G2, right. um, and I dove it for a long time. Right. And I can testify to this, guys. If you're looking for a computer that's bright, it's going to be easy to read and see, it's definitely one of them. I mean, um, I took it in a quarry where there was complete silt blackout at 20 feet. And this was when I was public safety diving. And I had to tie a line to an axle of a car to do a practice lift. Wow. And the I, did, I couldn't hold a light while I was tying, so I just used my light for my G2. Wow, that's saying something. <laughs> yeah, it was that bright. And I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't have to worry about anything, being able to see how much air and everything. So one so, of the coolest features of these computers yeah. is we have a free app, the LogTrack app. It's a Bluetooth app. Use it, actually, know actually it, use it. Cloud-based app, so yeah. your stuff's always saved. But you actually make changes to the computer with the phone versus going on the uh, uh, cable. One cool feature also is we always give free updates okay. online. You can download software updates. So like on the G2, and an update, they give a little brighter backlight cool updates, new languages, new features come in, and that's always free. So really, once you buy the computer, because they're rechargeable, they pretty much last, it's a 10,000 hour battery. Yeah. And you have the free downloads of the software updates. So I think that's really cool. And the free logbook. Okay. It's really cool features. Some people say, I don't like a wrist strap. Yeah. So we have the bungee mounts, or we have a little uh, clip for uh, retractor mount. So we move the wrist strap, touch the clip, it can retract when you BC. Mm -hmm. Really cool feature also. Wow, yeah, and I I use the dry I use the dry shoot strap on that, and that was really cool. Yeah. But I like the I like the bungee feature, and that's so that's so cool that you guys include that many options yeah. in your products. It's, all, it's well thought out, and the reason why that is like is because we're divers. Yeah, the engineers are divers, the marketing people are divers. Everyone here's a diver. Mm -hmm. We're passionate about diving, so if you go dive the gear, you figure out okay, how can this be better? As a school pro rep, and been around the company in tech search from the mid '90s. What I love at the company is they're always saying, where can we fix something? Where, where can we get better? Here's an issue, let's focus on that. They never say, here's one right. We know about that. Where can we fix this, this, this? Always looking at that. So this fin, okay, this fin is a phenomenal. It's retail for $299. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing you're gonna buy? Yeah. So you buy it right and you buy it once. It's just premium. Well, that's what I tell um, all of my students and uh, all my tourists who come down. I tell them, you know, if you're gonna buy quality, uh, then you're gonna get you're gonna get everything you yeah, yeah you're gonna get what you pay for especially in diving it's true in most things in life 
Uh, but you I think cheaper, it, yeah. but you're replacing it and going to come back to us. Yeah, I think, I think the common phrase I've heard throughout the whole diving career, I've been diving for almost 20 years now, and it's buy nice or buy twice. There you go. <laughs> so, you it. Yeah. so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, these are great. Uh, let's go and uh, what do you? What else do you have? I know you guys have got more coming yeah. down the line. So we're excited about these products. Yeah. The G3 anniversary model, the fins. Mm -hmm. I'll also point out to you the new Luna 2.0 dive computer. Okay. It's a nice computer. It's a color screen. It's, it's, a, it's a new generation of our Luna computer. It came out about 10, 12 years ago. Very popular because it was just so easy to use. Mm. Easy to read, a nice simple dive computer. That some was... computers, the manuals are this thick. These are just simple to use. Okay? Yeah. So the new Luna 2.0 is a color screen, real nice model, diver changeable battery, has all the features at a great price point. So the model that will take a transmitter sells for five seventy nine. Mm -hmm. The model with no transmitter feature, no air integration feature, is five hundred bucks. So for that price point, I get you a nice computer. And by the way, remember if you buy a School Pro BCD and regulator, add your computer, and the Parts for Life program kicks in. Yeah, that's a worldwide program where you're going to get the parts kits for free when you do your overall your regulator servicing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to buy a regulator, but I don't have the money to buy a new computer and a new PC. 500 bucks, new computer, all the features, nice price point, parts for life kicks in. Yeah, so, I, so that's, that was going to be my next question. You'd recommend that to new divers who are just getting in the sport and don't want to get completely overwhelmed by, a, by I totally, a dive computer? Because you can add on to that. You can add the yeah. transmitter down the road, yeah. and I'll assume you're fully integrated, hoseless computer. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. One less hose very comfortable, and this computer underwater is so nice to see and so easy to use. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, welcome back to DEMA 2023. We're here at the Dive Right booth. I'm Blake from Tampa Bay Diving. I've got Jared here from Dive Right. Jared, great to see you, man. How you doing? Nice to meet you. You nice made the trip you. all right from Florida? Yep, it was a good trip. I'm all right. happy to be here. Me too, did you get your Cajun food? I have had Cajun food. All right. Lots of hand grenades, everything in between. So it's the New Orleans experience is complete in my book. It's great right. to be back after 20 years gone. Um, so guys, what we're going to do now is uh, Jared's going to show us what he's got new for this show. Uh, Jared, what do you got for us? Yeah, so this year we had a couple of new products that released in 2023 that we're excited to show. Uh, one of them being the new Nomad Ray. So brand new side mount system. We released this earlier this year, but this is really the first time that quite a few people are actually seeing it if they haven't uh, weren't early adopters. So we have the Nomad Ray. What's cool about this rig is it is a uh, next generation. It's, we are coming off of our Nomad LS, which was been around for a few years and set a you know, pretty good standard for side mount system, but we just elevated that to a new level. So what really went back to the drawing board, redesigned a few features, came up with this wing design, which is a 42 pound lift wing. So a little bit more lift than the LS, which had about 35. Um, so if you're diving with maybe an extra stage, diving in a thinner suit with steel cylinders, or putting on a, you know, multiple aluminum 80s with a, a wetsuit, yeah. this has got a little bit more lift to do that. One of the things that we were trying to accomplish with this rig is put that 42 pounds of lift in it, but also make it look good in the process. So really when you are in the water and you've got this thing completely full, it stays nice and flat against your back. Uh, side mount has metamorphed into not just a functional way of carrying tanks, but it's also you gotta look good when you do it. So keeping that BC nice, flat, streamlined, extremely important. So. Um, this guy accomplishes that really well. It looks like it's going to help you keep a lower profile. I I don't necessarily get into the caves as much as most people do in our area, but I do tend to penetrate a lot of shipwrecks, and I think this is going to help me keep a lower profile for those small windows that we get to go through. Yeah, so one of the things you can't really see it as well from this angle, but the unit itself has the harness built in uh, to the top, right? So there's no like exterior harness with a wing on top. Mm -hmm. So it keeps everything nice and flat, closer to the body, less snag points. I mean, this is really flat up against, you know, on your back your shoulders maybe without a, a big snag point. Uh -huh. This is a big skid plate. There's no, you know, bands of webbing or anything for it to get trapped on in the way. And it does not lift off up off your butt, you know, six inches like some other BCs out there. Um, so we think that it does accomplish a really streamlined look in the water. 
On top of that, we try to make it more functional. So we're a big fan of putting this, you know, offset dump over to the side. It's a little bit easier for some divers to reach, especially, you know, trying to get back there uh, to find a pull dump when you need it. We are also a big fan of a top pull dump. So we've, we've kept that in, in our rigs over the last 10 or so years. We've tried to keep a top pull dump. So if you are in an inverted position, you can dump if that's on purpose or on accident. We want to make sure that you can dump gas. If you only have a bottom pull dump, you're forced to, to put your butt up or forced to unclip the inflator to roll. Mm -hmm. Those work, but having a top pull dump just makes it a little bit easier. Um, the other thing we did is we put an integrated weight system in the, into this. So it's got a zipper panel in the back with three individual weight pockets that can hold up to about 15 pounds. And we also put in some nice custom hardware, things like our little dog bone uh, butt D-ring and our drop down D-rings. The unit you know, also comes standard with sliding D-rings for those that are using aluminum tanks. Uh, really it's, it's ready to go diving. Yeah, I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, and as most divers who are into this kind of diving, you know, the more D-rings, the better. So I really like this. This is pretty cool, especially with your sliding D-rings. Um, so definitely going to have to pick this up and take it through some wrecks to see what we can get into, get it uh, get it down and dirty. Um, what else do you have for us? Yeah, so the other big thing that we uh, grab it from off camera here that we released right before the show, I think last week, was the new Slide Lock 2. Okay. So the Slide Lock 2 reel, is the next iteration of our slide lock series. We released the slide lock, the original one uh, in 2015, and it became a pretty big cult favorite. There's some cave divers and all that that won't touch it at all, that they really uh, want, you know, the old school screw down reel. I, I've, got, I've got it, I love it, I use it every dive. And I'm a big fan of it too. So either love it or hate it, we have another reel for you, the azimuth reel, if you want the old screw down. But the I have that too. <laughs> The slide lock reel is really uh, is awesome. You know, with a flick of a of a thumb, you can lock and unlock the reel, yeah. and that's super convenient, especially for shooting bags. So I I find this to be you know my go-to reel if I am out in the ocean shooting a bag. And now we move the the slide lock lever from the bottom of the reel, which is what it was in the previous iteration, yeah. up to the top. So now if I'm actually shooting a bag, it's even more convenient because it's right there at where I'm holding it, right? So this is how I maybe would be holding it, palming it down when I'm not using it, so. And I'm not sure you had this in mind when you made it like this, but I'm a lefty, so this just makes it that much easier for me right yeah. there. No, for sure. But you make the nice them in, about, the you nice make them in 200. The nice thing about these reels is that they are ambidextrous, so you yeah. can go from, from side to side. And so all you have to do is unwind the spool and you can change the orientation if you need to, if you are a lefty. But, the nice thing about this reel too is it has the same feature from the azimuth, which is a very convenient way to stow okay. the bolt clip out of the way and reel it up so you don't have to take it off if you don't want to, but easily comes off, gets clipped off if you're doing like a long running of your line uh, in a cave type scenario. All right, and you make those in 200 and 400, right? 200 and 400 foot. They also come in uh, orange or the white line. Okay. Maybe both. We may need them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, guys, just so you know, I don't recommend um, any product that I haven't personally tested out. And I haven't had my chance to get the Dive Lock 2 yet, but I can tell you from if it's anything like the Dive Lock 1, it's going to be absolutely superb. But I am going to get this and we're going to take it in some wrecks and get it down and dirty. And it looks like I'm going to have to, I have, it's been a while since I've been inside Mount, but I may, I may have to get back in it because this does look like, you know, it's gonna help me keep my profile small when I'm going through those wrecks. Cause some of them, the when they sink them, they don't cut openings in as wide as we would like. No, and side mount's a good tool. It can be a good tool for wreck diving on, especially those wrecks that are laying on their side. So you you have those doorways that you need to go through. Yeah. You know, the ones that are sitting straight up, that's where I like to put on my double. So, you know, using side mount is a, a good tool. Um, yeah. To work. So, well, Jared, thank you for so much for showing us this. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good rest of the 2023. I think we're going to go out and get some Cajun food later. Maybe have a little party. I don't know. It's New Orleans. It's, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. But Jared, thank you so yeah, much. Man, Pleasure meeting you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I'll see you in Florida. You're just a few hours north of me, so I'm going to drive up and we're going to get some dives in. Yeah, let's go diving. All right. Later. <laughs> Bye, guys.
Hey guys, welcome back to DEMA 2023. My name is Blake again with Tampa Bay Diving. I'm here with my good friend Robin from Backscatter. Robin's got some great uh, photography equipment he's going to talk about. He wants to show us. Robin? Hey. Hey, how's your DEMA been? It's been great, Blake. Thanks for coming I, out Yeah, I've been trying to get back and forth over here, but you guys have been insanely busy. It's been a great show for us. You know? So, yeah, obviously you've got some things that are new that got people very excited. What can you show us right now? Well, one of the main things we're showing off right now is our new Sharp Wide Lens Pro. This is for the GoPro system. So basically what it does is adds the same kind of color correction that we've known and loved for so long with our flip filter system and puts it behind a really quick, fumble-free bayonet wide-angle lens that expands the field of view of the camera, makes sharper-looking images with better contrast, and combines that color correction in it. So this has definitely been one of the stars of the show for us. This is the way to make your GoPro footage really shine when shooting wide-angle. It looks amazing. I have seen those on bigger camera rigs, but I've never seen it available for a GoPro. I've never even used one. Um, what systems does it fit? So this is going to be good for Hero 9 through 12. So okay. a lot of folks out there have been upgrading to the 12 recently because it's got so many cool features in it. This is really the trick to overcoming the limitations of the basic GoPro underwater housing. You know, it's like the camera has a great field of view for shooting wide angle on its own. This is really how we get it to that next level and, uh, you know, help improve the image quality as it comes through that little acrylic port on the housing. If that's a little too much for you, you know, we've always got the flip filter system too that's a bit more modular. So this is just a simple frame that mounts on the housing and allows you to put any two filters or lenses from the system on there. So for just color correction, you've got your two different depth rated filters with dive and deep, or you can add the Macromate Mini on there to expand the capabilities of the camera even further. So now we can focus just a few inches in front of the camera and shoot really small macro subjects in full frame sharp focus. So this gets the camera a little more versatile for most folks too. You kind of have different options to do it, but either way you can really trick out your GoPro, super easy. I, you know what? I'm thinking you're gonna have to order me this one right now. <laughs> that one looks really cool. I'm, I'm probably gonna, uh, if you don't, I'm gonna order one. Hopefully get that out and get it in the water and test it out. Uh, we, that we looks- make that happen for you, Blake. Yeah, that looks really amazing. I hadn't seen it yet. Um, and the macro stuff, as soon as I get into that, that's gonna take some practice, I know that. Oh, for sure. But yeah, with those little creatures, if you can just get good shots of them, especially because I'm planning to go to the Philippines, Yeah. I know that's probably gonna be really good out there. No doubt. Yeah. Here's the other thing about shooting macro is that it really does require a light, you know? And so yeah. we made our macro wide 4300 video light. Got it set up on this GoPro rig a little more for wide angle with the dual lighting set up on there. Yeah. The macro critters really need a light to get the proper exposure and color on them. And that's kind of the flip side is that you don't need a color correction filter when shooting macro because we're so close to the subject that lights doing all that work for us this light has a great over you know 4300 lumen wide beam or a 1400 lumen macro beam and so with just one button press we can go from lighting up our whole scene down to a subject right in front of the lens you can even attach the optical snoot on there which is going to get that beam down to a really crisp circle that's how you just light the subject and then get that background nice and dark so the subject looks like it's just kind of popping right out of the shot at you. Wow. Really cool, super simple system to use. You can even put it on a muck stick and go stick that out, light your subject that way uh -huh. and have it untethered from your camera. So you can then float around, shoot that thing from any angle you want. Your lighting doesn't have to change with it. It's really, really cool. <laughs> opens up whole new possibilities for the shooter, you know? I'm looking forward to testing all this out. Well, I know I know this isn't it. I know you got more stuff for us, but I love the GoPro stuff and I definitely use it all, but I know you got more exciting stuff. So let's yeah. go check that out. Let's check it out. All right, so Jared, we're over at a different table. What can you show us now? So kind of carrying on the conversation from our lighting, right? In addition to the, the uh, macro wide 4300, for more of the photo side of things, we got the mini flash too. And so this is a strobe that we made for shooting macro. It's not designed to light up a super wide, huge area. It's designed to put all the brightness right where you want it concentrated down on small subjects, just a couple inches in front of your lens. It's got a whole bunch of features to it, but what really gets cool is the same integration of that optical snoot, where now we can just selectively light our subject and keep the background dark. We also have the little aperture cards that go in and out here so that we can change the size and the shape of the beam to match whatever kind of subject we're working with. Okay. Really, really cool. It's got automatic flash power with Olympus cameras. So for all those folks out there shooting TGs, EM10-4s, EPL-10s, all the really popular Olympus systems, you don't even have to worry about how bright your strobe is. You just put it in the auto mode and it works. It's got uh, wireless off-camera features too. So you can actually have multiple strobes in the system. You have one on your camera, one off on a muck stick behind your subject, and now you can control that strobe 
from the one on your camera, both by setting the power levels, treating it like a remote trigger, you know, so the one on your camera is firing, but this is the light we're actually seeing in the shot. Really, really cool stuff. We've got a bunch of videos explaining how to do that and how to use all this, including adding in the color filter system. So now so, you can start backlighting subjects with an accent color and snooting them from the front. Stuff that like a few years ago was really kind of complicated, required a lot of gear, a lot of know-how to do. Now it's like dead simple. You can be a diver that just got certified two weeks ago and go out and start getting some amazing macro and really, really creative lighting um, with less gear and less, you know, time and patience and investment in this skill than ever before. So just kind of uh, bringing snooting to everybody, bringing fun, creative lighting to everybody, making it simple and trying to, you know, so, teach folks how to do it while, while we go along. Yeah, I, I know a lot of professional photographers really use and rely on your equipment here, but now it sounds like even the beginners can come in, even, you know, they're not professionals, but they can come in and get acclimated to the equipment even easier. Yeah, basically just kind of breaking down the barrier, making it less expensive, easier to use, more intuitive, um, and fun too, you know? That's that's definitely something everybody's looking for. The way the, the way that the demand is going is everybody wants things easier and you know, and, you know, more cost effective and, you know, time is probably the biggest one. So the fact that they can do it in a faster way is just probably going to make, I know a lot of underwater photographers that I know very happy. So I'm sure a lot of you are going to enjoy that as well. Um, and to hear you said wireless underwater. Yeah. So, yeah, so basically it's the, the light pipe accessory yeah. on the strobe is really what's doing the magic there. So it's a kind of a two strobe setup, right? You got yeah. your main strobe on your camera and this is using a special infrared filter. Uh -huh. So when this goes in, we're not gonna see the flash from this yeah. strobe, but it is still firing. And that infrared signal is what's being received by the light pipe on this one. So this is really just your, your remote sending unit, right? Okay. <clears throat> the only light we're seeing in the shot is from our strobe that's placed over here. And we can mix that up too by maybe making this a secondary strobe and still having another strobe here to actually light the subject from the front while this one still just triggers the backlight. So now we can really easily have two light sources in our shot. Maybe one of those gets a little colored accent. Mm. You know, we can take a look at some example photos and video of how we do this, both with the video light system too. Just opens up creative possibilities that weren't there before. You know, nice. if you got multiple mini flashes, you can even just press and hold the power button on this strobe and it'll change the power level on your remotely placed strobe. So if this one's a little too bright, a little too dark, you can just adjust it from here without having to swim over to it, place it or adjust it or anything like that. It's really, really handy. So maybe now's a good time to go over and we can talk about some of the cool Olympus cameras we got in the booth too. Let's go, I'm excited to see them. Okay, Robin, I see we're over here. We got some camera cases, some Olympus setups. What can you tell me now? So really what we're looking at here is kind of the latest spread of Olympus cameras, AOI housings, a um, couple other accessories in the mix too, but basically everything here is kind of our most popular cameras for either your first serious underwater camera or your first serious upgrade. So the Olympus TG7 is what we're looking at over here. This is the housing for it with our backscatter air lens on there. This camera for the last several generations has really solidified its place as the most popular <laughs> first camera for underwater photography. Okay. The TG series is known for being able to do insane macro right out of the box. Just the camera by itself can shoot closer with better macro autofocus than pretty much any other camera out there. It's like insane how good this thing is. Mm -hmm. All it needs is a wide angle lens to become a fully capable underwater system. So this is what gets a lot of people in the game. The TG7 is the latest version of it. It just came out not too wildly different than the TG6. Mm -hmm. Basically we said, hey, it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, it just keeps that same formula going. So we have a, a, a video series we made that teaches you how to use this thing with all the best settings for underwater photography. It's been massively popular for many, many divers that are looking to go you know, really get started on their yeah. photo journey, right? More I'm just, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know, more than just snapshots. It's like now we can actually start taking some really cool photos with this thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you add on like the wider wide angle lens, the M52 wide angle lens gets you out to 120 degrees with it. A couple of strobes on there to light up your shots. You can do sick macro or sick wide angle with this thing too, in addition to the, the built in macro capabilities. Uh, but a lot of people, have already kind of outgrown that camera. Some people have been shooting that thing for years or several models, so. Yeah, you'll see them selling them just to upgrade to the next one. Right, because now there's some cool new stuff that gets a little better than that. So like the EM10 IV and the OM1, this is where things kind of jump up to the next level within the Olympus system, okay? So 
The EM10 4 is what we call a micro four thirds camera. It's got a bigger sensor and an interchangeable lens, as well as full manual exposure mode. And we went and made this housing for it with our friends at AOI. This is the Backscatter Limited Edition Octo Print housing for the EM10 IV. This has things like an LED flash trigger in it for really easy rapid firing of your strobes. It's got vacuum protection. We like to say you can shoot it like a compact or like an SLR because it's really easy to interchange the ports on here to correspond with whatever lens you put on the camera. Okay. You dedicated fisheye and macro lenses, etc. Or you just run the stock 1442 millimeter lens behind the little flat port and you can adapt all the wet lenses on there that you want. So wide angle, macro, you can keep it just as versatile as your compact rig. And at the end of the day, this thing really isn't that much bigger than a TG. Yeah. You know, this is basically the size of a compact camera, but with all the abilities of a mirrorless. So we say it's the best bang for your buck in underwater photography right now. Yeah, I'll take your word on it because, yeah, I'm, I'm getting in it, too. So I'm definitely going to listen to you guys because you guys definitely have the experience in testing all this stuff. So it's helpful that you do those YouTube videos for people like me. That's a fun part of my job. I know that. You know? Yeah. And as a new beginner diver, guys, you can feel it's easy to film overwhelmed when you're trying to start off with photography and underwater photography. Robin and his team at Backscatter are there for you 100% of the way. I call them. They're all the way out in California. I'm in Florida. I'm three hours ahead of you guys. And so as soon as you guys open, I'll be watching and I'll call. But you also have an East Coast hotline. You have yeah, a West Coast hotline. That's true. So I'll be calling them early on. I've called them from the dive site and they've answered questions. We're here I'm like, to help, you know. I'm like, wait, wait, what is best for me to take down and how is the best filter and all this? I'm like, I just want to make sure. For sure. Yeah, because sure. uh, I, I, I remember very clearly it was on the Keys and we were going down to the Spiegel Grove, and which is known for sharks. And I love sharks, so I wanted to get, you know, the best footage I could. So thank you guys for that. That's um, so what we're here for. Yeah. Got a couple other things to show you. Want to cruise over that way? Oh, uh, man, you guys just never end. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Robin, uh, we're over here at your last table. I see a lot of lights, the Keldons mainly. Those, those are always impressive. But I see something else, some new things. What do you got for us? Well, you know, Backscatter is the world's largest retailer of underwater photo and video stuff. So even in addition to all the stuff that we make ourselves or that we really champion, like some of the Olympus cameras, and you know, we sell everything from everybody. And so we've got pretty much the entire smorgasbord here on our display, you know? <clears throat> One thing that is pretty cool right now is this new AOI GoPro housing. This thing really is pretty exciting. It's called the GPX and basically you put your Hero 12 up in the front there. You've got a bayonet for wide angle and macro lenses, and you've got a five inch monitor incorporated into the back oh. of the house. So now you can really start getting a really nice view on the back of that camera and kind of seeing what you're working with a little better on the GoPro. So this is definitely gonna be exciting. It's a very new one for us here at the show. But you know, a lot of people have also been asking about using their phones underwater. So we like the Sea Life Sport Diver housing. This thing's been great for us. I shot it a lot this summer. There's a lot of options coming out right now for smartphones underwater that are surprisingly good and capable. So if you're curious about that, good thing to reach out and give us a call, kind of stay on top of the latest things there, but don't write off your phone underwater if that's what you want to use. There's actually some practicality there. I have the Sea Life. I have it for my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I haven't upgraded to the 15 Pro Max. Have they made them yet? Are uh, they available yeah. for them? Yeah, they're pretty much all forward okay. compatible with those generations of camera. People definitely want, you know, just to utilize what they have. And a lot of people who get started start off with their phones. And I know they use those sea lives. I'm one of them. I still take it as a backup. Oh, for sure. But now you're telling me there's this whole new rig for the GoPro. That's looking really exciting. And it has that wider screen. Which so we can. The screen's my favorite thing about using the phone. Yeah. I mean, this thing is, that's a monitor, you know? It's yeah. wonderful. And, and so that's, now you get that same kind of functionality on the GoPro. That's always been one of my complaints and a lot of other GoPro users' complaints. Like, I can't see what I'm filming underwater, right. but now with that, that's going to be huge, I, I think. Because great. There's a lot of underwater photographers that utilize the GoPro, and now they're going to be able to see what they're getting a lot better. Here's something that's pretty uh, cool too. I know you mentioned these Keldon lights. These are some of our favorite high-end video lights. Yeah, they're the big boys on the block. They're all, everybody Everybody who's in underwater photography knows that like Keldon is one of the big names. Yeah, they're great. You yeah. know, they're super durable, very practical, um, and some of the best quality of light you can get out there. This one is actually something new where, you know, for a while Keldon's been doing these ambient light filters on their lights uh -huh. to help kind of match the color temperature that we're used to seeing underwater. Well, now they've integrated that directly into the light. So this is actually a blue light coming out of here that is 
color corrected or, or rather, you know, calibrated to better match the color temperatures that we're actually shooting with underwater. So you don't get that difference in the color temperature of your warmer white lights versus that cooler, more blue ambient light. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you turn these on, you don't really see the lights in the shot. It just kind of gets brighter and all blends in. So really, really cool. Definitely something that's a little more geared towards the pro shooter or the you know avid enthusiast more so than to pair with your first camera. It's not an inexpensive light, but at that end of things, it's really, really exciting. Yeah, I, f I follow Mateus Labo and his work that he does in underwater filming over in Europe. And he, he that's I think what he has on his setup is the, the Keldons. And the fact that you can do that now with the, the, the different temperatures, it's something definitely people want to learn, but you guys provide that education if they just call you or hit up your YouTube channel. Um, eventually I'm going to get one of those, but I got to say I'm happy with my backscatter lights too. So those, yeah, are, those sure. are all different tools for different jobs, yeah. you know, and the strobes too. I mean, everything, there's one for one for every need out there, especially with all the different cameras from all the different manufacturers that we sell. So no matter what you're after, you just give us a call. We'll still you're in the right direction, you know? Yeah, I definitely. Uh, guys, I'm going to link their website down in the description below and also their phone number. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate. Pick it up. Give them a call. Check out their YouTube channel. You're going to learn a lot. They're always going to be happy to help. Uh, well, I think the only thing left to do is put in my order and then come out to Monterey and dive with you guys so I can get some In-N-Out Burger and some good shots. <laughs> Sounds good, man. All right, Robin, let's go do it. Thanks, Blake. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of underwater photographers that utilize those GoPros, and now they're going to be able to an open water diver got certified two weeks ago and be out and start capturing amazing kind of macro oh. shots oh sorry we're uh, we're actually just shooting an interview excuse me sir we're actually just shooting a little interview right here no worries okay what where can uh where can our users find you at what's your website oh uh, it's never hits. oh this is our jurassic model uh -huh. and this year we came out with an enclosed muzzle version oh yeah. sorry we're filming oh Hi, okay. it's Finn, and um, I'm gonna walk through the shot. <laughs> so the Red Watch, we made 500 of these. Yeah. And these retail for guys, $1, guys, we're filming. Nine hundred and sixty-three dollars. Dude, oh, I'm gonna have to hire somebody to come. Stand, with stand there. Yeah. 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 See, watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is this is gonna. Uh, well, it's smile because this is going on blooper footage right here. All these people walking, we're just gonna be like. In their defense, it's so overwhelming here. Oh, they're like a deer. It's a deer in headlights effect. Ooh, ah. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Let me get some overhead shots I of these. See the blooper reel. That would be good. Well, guys, that's gonna wrap things up for us here this week. I hope that you enjoyed this video series and you got some great gift ideas for the divers in your life. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and leave us a comment about what videos you'd like to see in the future. Also, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you're alerted when our weekly videos drop. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, plan your dive and dive your plan.